And might we argue that the current state of neoliberal capitalism is to blame for the uneven distribution of sex? I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna uh, flesh that idea out. I'm just gonna throw it out there and I'll leave it- I'll leave it to you to work out how that makes sense. Will do, Drag. The insult can be seen as the consequence of the socio-economic changes that unfolded over the past 70 years. In this capitalist world, sexual success is correlated with social dominance, reinforcing the idea that sexual inequality mirrors class inequality. So it can be argued that the intel is the proletariat of not just the sexual world, but the world in general. The founding figures of communism, Marx, Engels, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao, seemingly overlooked the issue of capitalism. Some argue it was because there were alphas and chads who navigated this issue successfully. However, it's crucial to note that the socioeconomic landscape has shifted tremendously since the 1950s. We saw a significant rollback of workers' rights, the rise of the gig economy, and the increase of precarious work. At the same time, there was a significant decline in home ownership, accompanied with a surge of work in overtime. Inflation has further devalued the price of labor. The book Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism sheds light on the situation. It focuses on East Germany and the Warsaw Pact countries, but the same principles can be applied worldwide. In Japan, this problem can be seen most prominently. It's a conservative society with many expectations from men. This pressure leads men to become secluded and turn into the so-called herbivore man. They often have low-paying jobs, live with their pants, and risk humiliation as they attempt to form relations with the opposite gender. So many find solace in alternative pursuits such as in anime, video games, and other works of culture. Professor K. Willings points to two pivotal events coinciding with the decline of intimate relations. The introduction of the iPhone in 2007 and the global financial crisis of 2008. The following recession resulted in a transformation of the work-life dynamic, obliterating the boundaries between professional and personal life. These boundaries became blurrier during the lockdown. In today's profit-driven world, the mental strain imposed on individuals had left little time and energy for intimate relations. The asexual and the incel communities have seen rapid growth globally, particularly in the United States and in Europe, during the recent years after the lockdown. Some researchers argue that the post-World War II growth was an anomaly and not the rule. From this perspective, incels can be seen as a symptom of the world reverting back to the way it was before the post-war economic boom. The era of the expensive economic development, coupled with the social advantages, created an illusion of permanent progress. Incels, unfortunately, represent a byproduct and a reminder that those exceptional conditions were not sustainable. They serve as a reminder that the market will not grow indefinitely, something that strikes fear in the hearts of capitalists worldwide. Thanks for watching so far, and remember to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.